So here's an equation for you, something that you wouldn't see uh, early on in algebra, but now that we have the tools, it's not so bad. Here's a cube root of some quantity, 3x plus 1. On the right-hand side, it's equal to 4. So this is different because it's a cube root, but it's the same kind of idea. To undo a cube root, you have to do a cubing operation. So let me rewrite it. You have 3x plus 1, cube root of that, and on the right you have 4. So to undo the cube root, you have to cube that left-hand side which means you have to cube that right-hand side as well. So the cube kind of cancels with the cube root, leaving 3x plus 1 on the left. And then what is 4 cubed? That's 4 times 4 times 4. So 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 4 is 64. That's what you get on the right-hand side. And now you solve this as usual. Subtract the 1, you'll get 3x is equal to 63. And then when you solve for x, you'll divide by 3. You'll get 63 over 3. Uh, which means you're going to get 21. Believe it or not, 63 divided by 3 is a whole number. It's 21. But before we circle it, we always have to check and see if it's correct. And I've kind of mentioned multiple times, when you get only one answer here, uh, in the vast majority of cases, it will be the correct answer. It's just when you have multiple answers, then you have to check them and worry about some of them not being correct. So this should be right. But let's check it anyway. We're going to put it in here. 3 times x being 21 plus 1. We'll wrap that under a radical. We'll add, uh, let's see here, 3x, not e plus 4. This should be equals 4. I'm sorry about that. I carried the equals down here, uh, uh, which is what it should be. So this is going to be equal to 4 on the right-hand side. Sorry about that. So now we're going to check and see. What is 3 times 21? That's going to be, as we just found out, 60, if I can write correctly, 63, right? And then 63 plus 1 is 64. And of course, I have these are cube roots everywhere. Sorry about that. So here's a cube root. And the cube root of 64 is going to be 4, because 4 times 4 times 4. So we'll find that 4 is equal to 4, and that's the uh, good check there. So this answer is 21. That's the correct answer. So we plug it back in. We don't stick it back in any of these intermediates. We have to stick it back in the original to see if it's valid. All right, so let's go and do... I think the next one we're going to do right on the same board here. So we'll kind of like divide it up here. And let's take a look at what the next one is. It is 2 times a variable d, the cube root of that, uh, plus 5 equals 3. How do we solve that? Well, we want to get this by itself. So let's subtract 5. So what we'll have is 2 times d, cube root of that on the left. 3 minus 5 is negative 2. We'll have negative 2 on the right. How do we undo a cube root? We have to cube both sides. So 2 times d, cube root of that, negative 2 on the right. We're going to cube the right, and we're going to also cube the, the left. So the cube and the cube root are going to cancel, giving us 2 times d on the left. On the right, we have to do negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. And you should be able to convince yourself that that's actually going to be negative 8. Because when we're cubing something that's negative, it's always going to be a negative answer. And then d will then be negative 8 divided by 2, which is going to be negative 4. And we're going to ask ourselves, is this the correct answer? We only got one answer, so it should be correct. But let's go and stick it back, not in here, not in here, not in here. We stick it all the way back in the beginning. So let's check, uh, let's check that 2 times d, but d is now negative 4, the cube root of that, add 5 to that, and ask ourselves if, if it is actually equal to 3 or not. So what is 2 times uh, negative 4? That's going to be negative 8, cube root of that, plus 5. What is the cube root of negative 8? Well, you can think of it a few different ways. If you know it, that's great. But you can also just write this as negative 2. Negative 8 can be written as negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, doing our tree. And we're looking for cube root, so we're looking for triplets. So the answer is negative 2. Or you can just think, I mean, after a while, you remember negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is, is negative 8. So we get a negative 2 here, plus this 5. And when we add this together, we get 3, which is equal to the 3 on the right-hand side. So it's actually correct. And so then this answer is correct. So again, when we get down to one answer, with square, if we have to square both sides or whatever, we get one answer, it should be correct. But you still want to check it uh, just to make sure. And then if you have more than one answer, you have to be on especially sharp focus to make sure that you check all of them for extraneous roots. Speaking of that, the next problem is going to have more than one answer, and we're going to have to check them. So let's take a look at this. This is significantly more complex, I think, but still not too hard to solve. What if you have 2 
times the cube root of x. Right? That's a cube, 2 times the cube root of x on the left hand side. And then here we're going to have x squared, but that's going to be also wrapped up under a cube root. So we have a very weird looking equation. 2 times the cube root of x is equal to the cube root of x squared. Now, we already have a radical on both sides. Now here's the thing where I need to talk for a second. I've been telling you, try to get the radicals to one side of the equal sign and then undo it with a squaring operation. Okay, you do not, what I really need to say is, if you have more than one radical, try to split them up evenly over the equal signs. It's gonna save you a lot of time and energy because if you try to move this thing over, if you try to do something like this, two times the cube root of x minus the cube root of x squared, right, equals zero. If you try to move it over like that, then what are you gonna do? You're gonna raise this whole thing to the third power, right? Or something like this, and you have this to the third power. It's gonna be a nightmare because raising this to the third power, this is a binomial. It's gonna have lots of cross terms. And even then, you're probably not gonna cancel all of the roots anyway because, well, I don't wanna get into it, but you might have other terms that aren't canceled by the cubing here. So really what you wanna do in, in a more succinct way of saying it, if you have more than one radical in your equation, try to put one on each side of the equal sign. Then you can cube or square both sides very cleanly and undo the operations very easily. All right, so that's really the, the better way to say it. So what we're gonna do then is just rewrite everything here. This is two times the cube root of x is equal to the cube root of x squared. And so then we'll take on this side, we'll cube it, and on this side, we will cube it as well. So what we're gonna have left over here, don't forget this cube applies to the two, and then also applies to the cube root of x. So two to the power of three is eight. And cubing the cube root means you just have an x left over. Cubing the cube root here means you just have an x squared left over. So what you actually end up with is eight x is equal to x squared. So how do you solve that? So we move the 8x over, so we'll have x squared minus 8x is equal to zero. We just subtract it from both sides, and we now have x's that we can factor out. This will be x minus eight equals zero. Make sure you understand, this times this gives me this, and this times the negative eight gives me the negative eight x. Why do I do that? Because then I can say this is equal to zero, and this is equal to zero. So I say x is equal to zero, and also x minus eight is equal to zero. Solving this, x is equal to eight, because I can add the eight to both sides. So you see how I get two answers here. One of them I'm saying is zero, the other one I'm saying is eight. But I have to check them. So let me stick zero in here, and I'm gonna check x is equal to zero. Put the zero in here. I'm checking to see if two times the cube root of zero is in fact equal to the cube root of zero squared. Just sticking the zero in everywhere I see x. Well, the cube root of zero is zero, so I have two times zero equals question mark. Uh, this is zero underneath the radical. The cube root of zero is again zero. I have zero equal to zero. That looks to be correct to me, so that looks to be a valid solution. And then secondarily, I need to go down and check the other one. X is equal to eight, so I'm gonna check if x equals eight is a solution as well. So I'm gonna stick it in here. It'll be two times the cube root of eight. And I'm gonna check that and see if the cube root of eight uh, squared fits on the right-hand side, like that. All right, so now you have to be a little clever. You have to think about what these guys are. Here's the cube root of eight, here's the cube root of eight squared. So how do we simplify those guys? Because we, we have to simplify, we have to take the cube roots of these. So eight can be written as two times four, and four is two times two. So I have a triplet right here, and I know the cube root of eight is now two. But this one's eight squared, which is 64, but that's okay, I can still write it as eight times eight, because that's what it is. And then the eight is uh, uh, two times four, and the four is two times two, and the eight is two times four, and the four is two times two. So you see I have, a triplet of twos here, and also a triplet of twos right there. So I can simplify both of those um, over here by saying this will be two times the cube root of eight, which is now just two. And over here, this comes out to two times two. There's nothing else under there. And I can see that four is equal to four. So it looks like this satisfies the equation, so that's a valid solution. So you're putting together a lot of different things, a lot of different skills. You're learning about how to deal with cube roots. You're learning how to raise a cube root to a power. 
you're learning how to factor things, set everything equal to zero and solve. And then when you put them back in, in some cases you have to actually perform the cube root. So you have to do a factor tree and figure out what the cube root is to see if you can um, figure out if the answer is, is valid or not. And in this case, we got two answers, but both of them were correct. So I circle both of them and say they're both valid. Now in the next two problems, some of the solutions will not be valid. And so we have to be careful about that. So let's take a look at this. It doesn't look any harder than anything we've done before. x plus 2, take the square root of it, equals x. And I want to solve for this. So how do I do it? I want to undo the radical. It's already on one side. So I'm going to uh, square both sides. I'll square the right, and then I will square the left. Now when I square a square root, I'll have x plus 2 left over. On the right, I'll just have the x squared. So now I have to collect all the terms, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move these terms to the right-hand side by subtraction. So I have x squared minus x minus 2 is equal to 0. I subtracted the x, subtracted the 2. That's why they're negative. And they're equal to 0 because 0 is what's left behind. Then I kind of flip the whole thing around to have it on the left-hand side. And so I need to factor this, if I can. I'll try to factor it. x times x is x squared. 1 times 2 is 2. And I need a negative on the inside, so the only way it works is, <coughs> sorry, is like this. Check yourself, x times x is x squared. This gives you negative 2. This gives you x. This gives you negative 2x. When you add those, you get the negative x there. Now we set this equal to 0. x plus 1 is equal to 0. And we set this equal to 0. x minus 2 is equal to 0. We'll subtract and get x is equal to negative 1. We'll add over here x is equal to positive 2. I have two answers, just like I did in the last problem, and now I need to see if they're correct. So I'll go back up and check the negative 1 and, um, and see if the negative 1 is correct. So let's put the negative 1 here. I'll say I'll check x equals negative 1. I'll put it in here. Negative 1 plus 2 square root equals question mark x, but x I'm saying is negative 1. Negative 1 plus 2 is positive 1, but positive 1 square root of that is 1. And that's definitely not equal to the negative one on the right. So this is not correct. This is an extraneous solution. In other words, it falls out of the math, but it actually is not a solution to the original equation that we have. So let's try x is equal to 2. So we'll check x equals 2. And I'll stick it in here. I'll put the negative 2 in here. I'm sorry, positive 2 plus 2. Take the square root. Ask myself, is that equal to putting 2 in here? 2 plus 2 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. That is equal to 2. So yes, this is an answer. So this is a good example of, you know, you can't predict ahead of time. This solution here, this equation here, looks even more complicated. I get two answers, and both of them are correct. This one doesn't look bad at all, but I get two answers, and one of them is not correct at all, and one of them is. So this equation only has one solution. This one is just an artifact of the math that falls out of it, and it comes into play because we squared both sides, and sometimes when we square both sides, we introduce extra solutions which aren't, aren't true for our equation that we care about. Okay, final problem. t minus 2, square root of that, plus variable t equals 4. So what we want to do is get the radical on one side. Of course, we could square the left-hand side the way it sits, but we have this variable t there, and it's going to be ugly with the square root. So let's move the t over to the other side. So it'll be t minus 2 square root equals 4 minus t. All right? So then what do I do? I want to square both sides. So let me rewrite everything. t minus 2 radical 4 minus t, and I'm going to square the right-hand side, and I'm going to square the left-hand side. So the radical cancels with the squaring, leaving me with t minus 2 left over. On the right-hand side, I have 4 minus t squared. Now, there's no way around it. I have to square this binomial. I can write it out, or I can just kind of use some of the, sh some of the um, formulas that we've learned. You can say this squared minus 2 times this times this plus this squared. So if you do it that way, the first one squared will be 16 minus 2 times 4 times t, 2 times this times this, plus the last thing squared, t squared. Or you can write it out as 4 minus t times 4 minus t and, and do the thing and you're going to get exactly the same thing. So I have t minus 2 equals 16 minus 8t plus t squared. And now I need to move these terms back over so that I can then factor and solve everything. 
okay? So what I'm gonna get when I move a T over here is this T is gonna actually combine with this guy. It's gonna be a negative nine, right? Because negative eight minus one more be negative nine. So I have negative two is 16 minus nine T plus T squared. And then I'm gonna add two to get rid of it. So I'm gonna have zero left, but I'm gonna add two to here. It's gonna be 18 minus nine T plus T squared. Now to make it a little more palatable, I'm gonna flip everything around. I'm gonna write the highest power first. So t squared minus 9t plus 18 is equal to zero. I've just rearranged the order of everything. Now we try to factor. So we have over here, t times t is what gives me t squared. Now 18, you could do six times three, you could do nine times two. You have to go through the combinations, but what actually is gonna work is six times three is 18 with two negatives here. And you should check yourself. t times t is t squared. This times this gives me positive 18. This gives me negative 6t, this gives me negative 3t. You add them together, you get the negative 9t. So then this can be equal to zero, and this can also be set equal to zero. So I move that over, t is equal to positive six. I move this over, t is equal to positive three. And I ask myself, are these both valid or not? So let me check the six. I go all the way back, I don't plug it in any of these guys, I go all the way back to the top and plug in a six. I have to check uh, t is equal to six. And I put it in here, six minus two, square root, plus six equals question mark four. Six minus two is four, there's a radical there, plus six, this becomes a two plus the six, and this becomes an eight, which is not equal to four. Eight is not equal to four, so this is not a solution which means what I was checking is this. So this is extraneous. It's not a solution, so you don't circle it. The next thing you do is you try t is equal to three. You check t is equal to three. So you put three in here, three minus two, radical, plus three, check it, is it equal to four? Three minus two is one, plus three. Square root of one is one plus three, which you all know is four, equals four, so that's correct. So t is equal to three is a correct solution. So there is really no way to predict ahead of time if your equation is going to have extraneous roots or extraneous solutions or not. You have to follow the rules of algebra, squaring or cubing both sides is needed. Sometimes you'll get one answer, in which case those should always be correct. Sometimes you'll get two answers, maybe even higher, more answers for higher order equations but you have to go through and check them all to see which ones are extraneous or not. So make sure that you solve these, do them yourself, follow me on to the next lesson, and we will continue learning how to solve more and more complicated radical equations. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.